Hi kids! Every year in the fall, Apple announces their new iPhone lineup and all the rumors websites are reporting that Apple will not be updating what is arguably the best iPhone for facial motion capture. I'm Wet Circuit. This is cutscene artist with a bit of tech news, I haven't done one of these in a long time, that impacts the motion capture community, VTubers, animators, and other goofballs like me who just enjoy 3D puppeteering. As I predicted a few years back, the AR kit blend shapes have become the de facto facial capture system for indie animators. Nearly every 3D software now includes presets or some sort of importer for the iPhone data. 3D figure systems that used to use their own facial blend shapes, Real Illusions Character Creator, Ready Player Me, they're now all offering a full set of iPhone blend shapes as their new standard figure systems with old expression blend shapes. Yeah, they're going to start looking really outdated. Now, iPhone blend shapes is the only facial system currently working across video chat, animation, VTubing. The metaverse, whenever that happens, will supposedly support universal compatibility across 3D content. And those metaverse avatars will be powered by ARKit blend shapes. This is, I don't need a crystal ball to predict that. This is a permanent industry-wide thing. If you don't have an iPhone or you don't want an iPhone, it doesn't matter <laughs> because your figure system has probably already switched. So you're using Apple Blend Shapes like it or not. Now, we're coming up on the inevitable release of iPhone 14. The rumors are all agreeing that Apple will discontinue the iPhone mini, easily the best iPhone if you head mount the phone for facial motion capture. The mini is smaller, lighter, less expensive, and the iPhone mini has the true depth sensor. That's the feature that makes the blend shapes happen. Now, most of us can barely afford an iPhone, much less buying a dedicated iPhone just for facial motion capture. That price of a dedicated facial capture device is offset naturally if you're using the iPhone as a phone. <laughs> I just, For me, that justified spending extra on the iPhone. If I consider the difference in price to the cost of some face capture hardware device, that's, I mean, that's what I told myself so I can, you know, wake up with myself in the morning. Any iPhone with a true depth sensor will work, including a couple of iPad Pros. They're all capable of running the same facial capture software all the way back to my almost six-year-old iPhone X. Now, if you're shopping for a used iPhone, look for models without a home button on the front. No home button means the iPhone uses Face ID, and that's the feature that gets you the facial motion capture. And this feature is the same across all of these models. The true depth sensor has not changed in six or seven years. It might change in the future, but so far all of these seem to be exactly the same on whatever iPhone model that you're working on. Now, my aging iPhone 10, it captures blend shapes just fine. <laughs> the issue is actually about my head mount. I have to put a, the phone in an awkward little phone cage and then attach the phone cage to a roll bar on the headset and what ends up happening is it's just one more excuse why I can't put on the full head harness <laughs> to do proper motion capture. It's easier to just leave my iPhone on a microphone stand when I'm at my computer. It, it lives there full time. But I'm at a point where I need to be capturing every day. I paid a lot for my head mount. I'll do a video of the various head mounts and iPhone stands that I use. The real issue is I don't have a lot of confidence in the little 3D printed phone cage. It has to be bolted together. Uh, that takes time. It's a little flimsy. Mm, I don't f I feel like if I keep opening and closing this cage to pull the phone in and out a few times a day, eh, this thing is going to break. It's 3D molded plastic. Uh, by the way, it's not possible to use my phone while it's connected to my head. I, I can't actually reach the side buttons on the phone. 
<laughs> through the stupid little plastic cage. Now, it would be nice for me to have a dedicated device that can always live in that cage you know, for an extended time, weeks, months, and I don't have to pull it apart to use the phone. <laughs> Suddenly, that advantage of offsetting the cost by having my face capture device also be my phone, uh, it doesn't work. <laughs> it becomes inconvenient, even self-sabotaging, to use my phone. I just don't want to, you know, screw it into the whole head mount and do the whole thing. Now, if I get a dedicated iPhone to just leave in the head mount, uh, well, it might as well be smaller and lighter than my iPhone X2. And uh, I don't need the latest phone. I just want the face capture. I want the smallest, lightest, and cheapest iPhone that can do face capture. Now, that's actually the problem. It exists, but people don't want it. <laughs> Buyers don't want small phones. They want bigger and bigger screens. Phones are getting so big that they have to fold in half to fit in your pocket. Now, that's the opposite direction that I want to go to, into. I thought there would be this sweet spot where bigger phones met smaller tablets. And no, people want bigger iPhone, iPad tablets too. They just want everything's bigger. Apple makes a budget iPhone SE, it's smaller and cheaper. It does not have a true depth sensor, so for most people who want a small, cheap iPhone, they go with that SE model, not a mini. The result is that the iPhone mini is the worst selling iPhone ever. <laughs> Apple has no justification to keep this model alive, so it is being discontinued. That's what the rumors say anyway. Now, the, the hardware on uh, the minis is usually a generation lower. Um, that should only concern you if you're a developer. Some AR kit features require uh, newer processors. And the cameras, the general cameras, are always being updated. But I, uh, I think... <sighs> now, newer models... Uh, usually offer better front-facing cameras that work better in low light. And yes, the regular camera, the front-facing camera, is involved in facial mocap. It's not just the infrared sensor. Your recording is going to be affected by room light, by sunlight, by, you know, not enough light. A better camera will record cleaner mocap, but honestly, recording conditions in the room that you're in that will play an even bigger role. So I have researched a lot, a little too much. I never found anyone saying that a newer iPhone gave them better face capture. It, this could change in the future. iPhone 14 Pro will supposedly have yet another better front-facing camera and a redesigned true depth sensor. But that's the Pro model. So hundreds of dollars more. Minis are usually smaller versions of last year's hardware, so when Apple updates their cameras, the latest tech does not end up on the Mini. Mini has less storage, an older camera, and a smaller battery. All reasons that make it less desirable as a phone, but maybe no factor at all for facial capture. All right, should you buy? Well, the real question is, should I buy? Um, there are currently two iPhone Minis iPhone mini 13 is the latest model. There won't be an iPhone 14 mini. That's according to rumored websites. The second model is the year older iPhone mini 12. It's still available and it's $100 cheaper than the mini 13. Slightly older specs. Remember the mini gets the specs from the year before. So mini 12 is roughly equivalent to an iPhone 11 but it does have a slightly faster processor. The Mini 13 is slightly faster still, and spending $100 more on the Mini 13 should extend the support from Apple, thir Apple you know, another year or so. Uh, I'm not sure that bump in specs is worth an extra $100, but it has more storage and maybe longer battery life. It is, it's a better phone. 
Of course, Apple dropped support on their old models at some point. You won't be able to update the OS. And that's a knock against the Mini 12. Uh, the Mini 12 is a hair lighter than the Mini 13. It's the lightest iPhone that can give you the blend shapes. We're splitting hairs here. Probably not a difference you can detect even with the iPhone strapped on your head. <laughs> The real advantage of the Mini 12 is the cheaper price and essentially no difference in facial mocap. Now you can still buy the Mini 12 new. It's under warranty and everything at least until the iPhone 14 lineup is, in, is announced early this fall, probably around the Equinox last week in September. That's in about five to six weeks from me recording this. so information will change. It's also, you can buy a uh, Mini 12 Fall Supplies last when Apple announced they were discontinuing the iPod Touch earlier this year. Apple fans <laughs> ran out and bought them all. <laughs> I don't know that that's going to happen with the very unpopular Mini 12. Then. So should you get an iPhone Mini 13 for motion capture? Should you buy used or should you grab the Mini 12 while it's cheaper and under service warranty? Well, I can't tell you what to do. I'm just trying to give you the time, about a month, maybe five weeks, to compare the options. I think I'm going to wait until the new iPhones are announced. The rumors are probably right. There will be no iPhone Mini 14. I'm expecting the Mini 12 to disappear. I assume Apple will keep offering the Mini 13 at least for a while. Uh, maybe the iPhone mini 13 will drop in price. That would be okay. Get a slightly better phone. Uh, hopefully for that same hundred dollar drop in price. Uh, rumors are actually saying that the iPhone 14 could be more expensive. Uh, financial types are expecting product delays, chip shortages for all tech for the next year. If the Mini 13 is not discounted, I think there'll be a short window of a few weeks where I can still get the Mini 12 before it's gone forever. That's my tech news. I'm Wet Circuit, this is Cutscene Artist. Uh, I would recommend buying an iPhone if you want to do motion capture. I'm going to do a video in a couple of weeks about other options such as they are. There is still no Android option, at least nothing mainstream. I'll do another video of that, and I promise to do a video about the head mounts and what your options are there. This is Wet Circuit, Cutscene Artist. I'll talk to you soon. Uh,